Welcome to the Green Left Report, media for the 99%. I'm Mel Barnes. And I'm Simon Butler. This show, we asked Julian Assange's mother, Christine Assange, about her favourite WikiLeaks releases. We also report on recent protests to support Gaza and to free refugees locked up in Australia's detention hellholes. Plus, we'll hear from Carlo Sands. But first, some activist news. Protesters from as far away as Colombia and Japan joined a November 29 rally in Sydney to protest the world's biggest mining company, BHP Billiton, outside its annual general meeting. They said the company was a merchant of death which displaces indigenous communities and exports deadly uranium. I see my land, I see my children, I see my waters, I see my people. Welcome to Mother Earth. Making up uranium and selling it all over the world, and including Fukushima, is really criminal. A delegation of 19 campaigners from the Save Malaysia Stop Liners Group travelled to Sydney on November 20 to present the concerns of local residents about Australian company Linus's plans to build a rare earth mineral refinery in Kwantan, Malaysia. A message of protest against an Australian company which is trying to operate a toxic uh, rare earth refinery in their hometown. We have to live next to the world's largest rare earth plant which was built without our consent. It will pile up the waste produced in a single year on a football field. It will rise up to four storeys. There's mountain high of radioactive waste. National rallies calling for equal marriage rights for lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender and intersex people took place on the weekend of November 24 and 25. In Perth, about 500 people took to the streets. Is that we will see an end to the prejudice and homophobia. One, two, three, four, smash the homophobic law. Five, six, seven, eight, now you know your kids are straight. It's so important that all you guys keep coming out and supporting the cause. Hey, hey, ho, ho. Homophobia has got to go. Ho, 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 ho. All issues of human rights in Australia have been long struggles. Hey, straight, black, white. More than a thousand people rallied for marriage equality in Sydney. Jeff Thomas, a parent to a gay son and a prominent campaigner, was one of the speakers. It's a basic human right to marry the person that you love and to have that commitment recognised in the law of the land. This is not a religious issue. Religion has little or nothing to do with same-sex marriage. This is a matter of law and individual human rights, and our politicians have a duty to see it as such. Christine Assange was the guest speaker at Green Left Weekly's annual dinner in Sydney, held on November 10. We asked her what does the Australian government's hostile treatment of WikiLeaks say about its relationship with the United States? We're a public government. I mean, I, when I started this adventure two years ago to support my son, I had no idea what I was going to find out. I thought the US was, um, unlike perhaps many of you, I was more naive. I thought that the US was a, you know, save us from terrorism, etc., etc. And what I've actually found out is that the US government is a terrorist organisation. And I'm absolutely disgusted with our government. You know, they've got corns on their belly, they've been crawling for so long. <laughs> Julian's lawyers put us to 16 different things from the Australian government and were not back for all 16. Commentators have been calling for, for Julian to be assassinated and killed and garroted, etc., etc., as is their way of dealing with things. And Julian's lawyers asked, could you please ask them to retract those statements? The Australian government wouldn't even ask. No. Ah. No. Um, they, Julian's lawyers asked the Swedish government to, to desist from making defamatory and untrue statements in the media about Julian's uh, court case thus producing his right to a fair trial, they wouldn't even ask. Uh, the most 
scary one for me. There were two. One is that on the conclusion of the case in Sweden, could they guarantee his safe passage back home um, so that he wouldn't be yanked off the plane by a bunch of CIA agents head to head for a black site somewhere? And they wouldn't even ask for that. And the last one was if he found himself in a US prison, um, could they please ask the American government not to put him under special administrative measures, <clears throat> which is a nice word for torture. And they put people, prisoners under special administrative measures uh, when they want to torture them, but they don't want to call it torture. And they say that the prisoner is a danger to himself. They did that with Bradley Manning against the express wishes of his psychiatrist. The Australian government wouldn't even ask the American government not to torture my son. We asked Christine Assange why she thought the mainstream media has been so hostile to WikiLeaks, which has produced more scoops than the rest of the media has for decades. These big media uh, organisations are owned by the same people that WikiLeaks is outing. General Electric, Goldman Sachs, Halliburton, JP Morgan. So that would be one of the, one of the reasons. The other one is jealousy. The ones that would like to be well known but don't want to do the hard work and don't want to stick their necks out. Absolutely useless. I've got to give Green Left a bit of a plug here because the print journalists from all around the world, the one who has been most keen to print the facts has been these guys. Uh, not only were they courteous to me when interviewing me, but were very keen to get the facts right. And they showed a lot of braveness in, in not holding back. And they, they didn't cut the juicy bits out, in other words. So I think Green Left needs a great big hand. <laughs> And that's why I'm here tonight, actually, to support them. That's why I've come here tonight. I actually haven't come here tonight as, a, as something for Julian. I've come here tonight to support Greenleaf because without this little paper, with the big heart and lots of guts, Australian people don't know what's going on. We also asked Christine what WikiLeaks releases had made the biggest impact on her and had changed the way she thought about politics. First of all, when I found out why Bradley Manning did what he did, the last straw for him, he was asked to take um, 15 Iraqi civilian dissidents to the Iraqi police for torture. And their big crime was running around with a piece of paper that said, where's the money gone? And that was about the reconstruction rorting, which happens after, after wars, especially with US contractors. And when he objected, he was told to shut up and go and get 15 more. The next one was Haiti, <clears throat> one of the poorest countries in the world, and it had the big earthquake, and people poured money in from all over the world. But the US government decided, oh goody, we can use it. So at that time, the president of Haiti was trying to get the minimum wage uh, brought up for his clothing workers, there were 26,000 of them working for brands like Haynes and Levi Strauss. They were in poverty conditions and he wanted to raise the minimum wage. It's only a matter of 30 cents or something an hour. And the American government said, well, if you want to do that, you can forget about any aid for your earthquake. Now, I'm no politician, but that sounds like blackmail to me. Um, then as well, I stepped in to help by offering to get them cheaper oil, take 40% off the price so that they could build their hospitals and schools and Chevron and the others moved in and blockaded that. And the last part of that cable was the US contractors who have, had been found doubling their quotes at Katrina and Rorting. And the cable said the gold rush is on. It's not only do they make money out of all the weapons they use, but post-disaster post -disaster and post-war, 
then they make a whole lot more money out of rorting in a reconstruction. And a lot of the aid money that goes in from everybody around the world goes to these people. So they just win, win, win every way it goes. You know, there's always a bit of money for them somewhere. Um, back closer to home, two cables stood out. One's an environmental cable, 2007. The Howard government had legislated to protect the Barrier Reef by um, saying that any big boats that went through the, the Torres Strait had to call the mainland to get a pilot boat to go through yeah, so that to avert um, an oil spill or a gas spill, chemical spill. The US wasn't happy with that. It wanted to take that legislation away, but they resisted. When this current Labor government got in, they tried again. And the cable, it's really fascinating. If you haven't looked at these cables, go and have a look at them. It's, to, to see it actually written down, the way these people talk to each other is a real eye opener. So it goes something like this. Mm, we'd really like to help you, but if we took away the legislation and there was an oil spill, the Australian people would never forgive us. Not, oh dear, there might be a spill on the reef and damage our beautiful reef, but we might get caught out, right? Um, and then it goes along, Never mind, that's all right, we thought of a solution. When your boats go through, in other words, the US boats go through, if you get caught, we won't issue a penalty. All right, that's our government. They're the ones that really affected me. I didn't need to do any more than that. I, I, I didn't come out and support Julian because he's my son. I supported Julian's right to a fair trial over the Swedish stuff, okay? But I didn't come out publicly and support WikiLeaks until I was assured that it was a good and useful thing in the world. And I'd read enough cables to know that, and they're still coming up. Now for some more activist news. Rallies in solidarity with the people of Gaza took place in several cities across Australia in late November to protest Israel's latest brutal military assault on the enclave. In Sydney, more than 1,500 people showed their support for a free Palestine and their opposition to Israeli apartheid. The children of Gaza are being torn to pieces. The women and men too. We, the world, witness this mass murder and accountable will be hauled all of you. Pathetic politicians with big mouths and no power. Obama, where are you now? Shawan Jabarin, the Director General of the Palestinian Human Rights Organisation Al-Haq, addressed a public meeting at the University of Sydney on November 29. Jabarin, formerly an Amnesty International prisoner of conscience, warned that Israel's latest attack on Gaza will not be its last. I have a concern that the cast lead in 2008, it will repeat again and again and again. What happened in the Gaza this month, it will, be, it will not be the end of this operation and this aggression and this attack. Uh, as you know, uh, since 2009, when they stopped their big operation called Cast Lead, which resulted more than 1,400 people, they were killed at that time. Since that time, until today, more than 330 people were killed from 8th of November until 22nd of November, 173 were killed. Sydney-based group Jews Against the Occupation rejects Zionism and campaigns for a free Palestine. In a recent video, members of the group explained why Israel is not a democracy and why they support the call for boycott, divestment and sanctions against Israel. It is not a democratic land. In Israel there are numerous laws that completely deny democracy. They are fascistic in their orientation. For example, it is now illegal to commemorate the Nakba 
and also if you call for boycotts, divestment and sanctions, including in this very illegal settlements, it is grounds for civil action against loss of business and so on. The justice system in Israel allows for indefinite detention of Palestinians without trial, as well as injudicial execution. Yet we in the West are asked to recognise Israel as a democratic state. I've come to the conclusion that the only peaceful way of shifting the way the right-wing government in Israel is moving is through the use of BDS. Called for by many, many civil society groups in Palestine to isolate Israel until it abides by international law. The boycott, divestment and sanctions is a peaceful method which is somewhat like was used in South Africa to change the regime away from apartheid. Asylum seekers held by the Australian government in a detention centre in Nauru have continued their desperate protests and hunger strikes, calling for their refugee claims to be processed in Australia. The Refugee Action Collective Sydney organised a protest outside the office of Federal Health Minister Tanya Plibersek on November 22 to protest the Labor government's brutal Pacific solution for refugees. Just a few moments ago we got news that someone has been taken to hospital with kidney failure and it seems likely that an airlift is uh, going, to, going to be needed. That comes on the back of the Liberal opposition's recent calls for further measures which are going to have no other effect than to hurt and damage people who are just asking us to help them. So we're here to call on Tanya Plibersek, who's the Health Minister, to use her public influence as a Cabinet member of the Gillard Government to speak out publicly to change the way that the government is treating asylum seekers and to actually put into action the uh, humanitarian values which she's very quick to appeal to but which she's so far done nothing to act. Hey Tanya, we're talking to you. Not Man's Island, not Nauru. Hey Tanya, we're talking to you. Not Man's Island, not Nauru. And now, let's hear from Carlo Sands. G'day, I'm Carlo Sands. And this is my corner. What I want to know is what is it with all these corporations and their ads shoving down our throats, particularly inane statements? You know, the sort of statements you might otherwise see on Facebook memes that annoy the hell at you when the friend you wish you'd defriended a while ago keeps posting one after the other. You know, the ones that say, you should just be yourself. Don't let anyone stop you being who you are. The number of ads, American Express is now doing it. They've got an ad that you can see on YouTube that says DNA is wonderful stuff. It's what makes you you. Which presumably is why they have very special fee structures for each of us as individuals to screw us over that extra bit more. Like, be yourself. It sounds good, doesn't it? But what if you're a bastard? Like, Alan Joyce, Qantas CEO. The man's so anti-union, not only did he lock out his entire workforce last year in a bid to smash three unions at once, it's only a few weeks ago he couldn't resist his anti-worker tendencies. He sacked 400 more engineers. Should he be himself? No, he shouldn't. If you're watching, Alan, for God's sake, try channeling Gandhi. Like, seek therapy. I don't know, like... Take some pills. I know a doctor, he'll sort you out. For Christ's sake, just don't be yourself. It's not just Alan Joyce. There was a study last year that showed that business leaders are four times more likely to be psychopaths than the rest of society. And that's actual psychopaths. That's clinical psychopaths. Those who have no moral instincts. Should they be themselves? What about the, the heads of fossil fuel companies? Those business leaders who, despite the fact that the World Bank itself has just said we're on target for at least a four degree temperature rise by the end of this century, thus making the planet pretty much uninhabitable for all human life, nonetheless, full steam ahead, more coal, more oil, more fossil fuels. Should we let them be themselves? No, we should put them in straitjackets. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm all for Anyone who needs mental health treatment, getting as much treatment as they want, as they possibly could need, so that they can function as normal, healthy, non-dangerous members of society. I just don't think they should run our economy. I'm Carlos Sands, and that 
was my corner. Thanks, Carlo. That's all for the Green Left Report for this episode and for this year. Please consider making a donation to keep this radical media project alive and subscribe to the Green Left TV YouTube channel for the latest films and interviews. We leave you with some messages of support to Julian Assange from attendees at the Green Left Weekly Dinner. Goodbye. Goodbye. Julian, we're right behind you. Don't stop fighting because you're doing great work. We want you to be free. We're going to protest and demand your freedom. Thank you for all that you're doing to bring the truth to light. We wish you were here to tell us all the truth that is being hidden. All Latin America with him. One too many WikiLeaks is what we need. We support you forever, Julian Assange. You know, we're all behind you and it's just growing in Australia. Love you. Bye, sweetie. Function. Not for those with a deficit in gumption When there's a life, there's a societal function